Woo! What's up, folks? G Funk is back. I had a slight problem with uh, doing it on um, on YouTube. I thought it was live, but it didn't, so I decided to do it on here. You can only tape a certain amount of time on the YouTube also to record. I didn't know it was like a 20 minute thing. I thought you could do it live, and it, so I'm doing it on here now. So, anyways. Um, what's up? Uh, Mr. X is not here. He had a last minute business trip he had to attend in Singapore. So, um, hopefully he'll join me when he gets back. Um, this, hopefully this weekend, but he's not sure yet. So, but here I am. Um, we're going to talk some New York sports. I'm going to run down, um, and as for, I want to say to Mr. Mike Elser and Mr. Joseph Everett. Pfft, never will I go to the dark side that is the disgusting, stupidest America's team <laughs> on that. Fuck the Cowboys. Giants for life, man. <laughs> Anyways, talk Giants and right now. Um, a lot of free agent stuff's going on. Um, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, Giants signed Jonathan Stewart, Nate Solder, um, um, Alec Oletree, um, Mike Oletree? I think it was Alec or Mike Oletree? Alec, I think his name is. A lot of good moves. Um, wasn't good on Jonathan Stewart. Uh, if we would have signed him maybe like five, six years ago, eh, I might have been on board. But he's not, you know, either draft Barkley or don't. But don't pick up guys who are past their prime. They're not going to do nothing. He's just like another, he's just another dark wall slash Gallman guy that you don't need. And he's older. You know, we need younger guys. Um, right now, they're either taking, I, I th as long as Cleveland doesn't take Barkley, I think the Giants should take Barkley. Because he's, a game-changing running back, which the Giants haven't had in eons, and they need to balance out the attack for them, you know, for, um, you know, for Eli, because Eli can't sit down there and throw passes, throw 50 passes a game. He's, he's not, you know, he's 37 years old. He doesn't, you know, he can't do that anymore. So you got to balance out. you got to have someone who can run the ball and get you good yards. Barkley is explosive running back, can break tackles, and can break a big one any time. So, I don't know. I'd like to see... You know, if they, if they, but if they're not, they're gonna wait. Like I don't, this is the, like I don't know how the drafts next year is gonna go for quarterbacks class next year. But this year's class is probably the best it's gonna get for a while. You know, with Rosen and Darnold and and Allen and Mayfield. So either they take one of those guys now, or they get another different quarterback down the line. Because I don't know if that Davis Webb is the answer. So I don't know. A lot of stuff happened. The Jets signed Isaiah Crowell. They signed. Um, who else did they get? They signed a couple other guys, but the Jets. Oh, they signed McCown to a one-year deal for ten million dollars, which I was like, eek. And they signed Teddy Bridgewater, which is a huge gamble because he hasn't really played that much because of his injury. So he's coming back from a major injury. Uh, I don't know. I said I would rather see Teddy Bridgewater play. He's younger, but he's coming off a major injury. So is he going to be good? I don't know. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure Jet fans want to see him. Probably. You know, uh, you know. Like I said, uh, uh, McCown was good last year, but he's 39 years old. You know, is he gonna have a, a decent? Like his year was great; it was good. Is he gonna have? A, it's like he's having a fucking MVP season. But like I said, I would go Bridgewater because he's younger and he can do a little bit more. But like I said, it depends on how he's gonna come off his injury. I don't know if the Jets are gonna draft. They're gonna draft quarterback. They're gonna draft the guy Chubb, uh, the defensive, you know, the defensive pass rusher. I don't know. Do you have a defense, a decent defensive pass rusher since John Abraham? But I don't know what the Jets are going to do. The Giants, I said, I'm all for Barkley. We're taking a quarterback. At this point, it doesn't really matter. Jordy Nelson got cut by the Packers, and now he's signed with the Raiders, which I was stunned. My brother-in-law almost shit his pants because he's a Packer fan. Jimmy Graham signed with the Packers. Uh, so Danny Amendola went to the Dolphins. Dude, th there's so much. I can't even keep track of so many guys bouncing from fucking team to team. Um, the Giants got Nate Solder, who was a good... Tackle. Hopefully, put him as left tackle and get fucking Eric Flowers out of there. John, I'm sorry, man. I, I was gonna do long story. Watch the beginning of the video. It explains what happened. Um, I will do your questions in a little bit. But um, yeah. So I think the Giants, like I said, if they take Barkley, I'll be happy. If they take a quarterback, I'll be happy. Either way, they just like I don't know what they're gonna do. It's gonna be tough, but I think the Giants will take Barkley if as long as Cleveland doesn't take him because I think Cleveland might take him. But if they do, they got, you know, who knows what they're going to do. That's all. I don't know. Um, what was the other thing I was talking about? Oh, okay. Um, basketball. Take basketball real quick. The Knicks suck. 
the Nets are getting bit better. They're not there yet, but they're building. They're going in the right direction. Um, the Knicks, on the other hand, are not. Um, they need to get a new coach. Uh, Homer six sucks. I'm sorry. Even if they if they did have freaking Porzingis, they still would suck anyway. Bring in Mark Jackson. That's it. And the way they're playing, I don't know. Like they're right in the middle of the pack. I don't know what draft pick they're going to get. Either way, it's not going to help them. So, either go trade somebody, trade a draft pick, and get a good point guard. I don't know what they're going to do because of that right now, as I've told people many times, the Knicks are run horribly. Until Dolan sells them or gets rid of them, the Knicks are always going to suck. I don't care who you put a GM. Johnny Walsh is your best bet to win anything, and you got rid of him. So guess what? We're fucked. I said, when I see the Knicks win championship, I'm going to be like in my 80s, on my deathbed, in my hospital bed, watching the freaking Knicks in the champion in the NBA Finals, let the game-winning shot, and when that happens and I see it go in, I'm going to tell my wife, pull the plug, and so I can die a happy man. Because that's what's going to happen. They're not going to win because they, they don't know what they're doing. Like, t- if you put me as a GM, fuck it. We'd have, we would have had freaking uh, either Isaiah Thomas here or we had freaking Kyrie Irving here or a, a slew of other different guys where we could've, I would have made deals out the wazoo to get. But, unfortunately, the front office is full of morons. Uh, I know shit about hockey, so all I know is the Rangers aren't doing well. The Islanders, I don't think are doing that great. And I think the Devils might make the playoffs, but otherwise, I don't know shit about hockey. Baseball. We're talking. Yankees, I'll wait for them. The Mets. I have a lot of Met fan friends who are Met fans. They're very, most of them are pessimistic, which is a lot of them. Um, I don't blame them after the 2015 season. You thought they might be make another run in 2016, which they didn't. Um, but I think the Mets, on paper, as long as everyone's healthy, is a good team. That's the thing. They have to stay healthy. They have probably the best starting rotation, if everyone stays healthy, in the major leagues. Um, will they go far? Their lineup's not bad. Cespedes has to produce. If he doesn't... You know, he's got good guys around him, so he should get a decent amount. You know, he's got Adrian Gonzalez now. Jay Bruce signed. Um, I think the lineup's going to score them runs. They're not gonna, it's not going to be like the Yankees lineup, but they're going to score runs. They're bullpen suspect, though. Unless they get some sign up. Well, the bullpen's gotten better, but if they don't have a... I don't think Familia's a great closer. He's good. He's not lights out, but he's good. Um, but they're starting pitching. They're starting, they're starting three is ridiculous. Syndergaard, DeGrom, Harvey. Granted, if Harvey can be anywhere as good as he was when he first came up, or at least halfway as good, they're going to be their starting rotation going to be nasty. Um, but like I said, their that their thing is all health. If they can have all their five good starting five starting pitchers, especially the top three, all healthy, they they have a good shot. If you can get them thirty starts and win you know win a decent amount of games, yeah, I think they have a good shot. Because the only team they really have to contend to is it was the Nationals. The other three teams, the Marlins are definitely rebuilding, the Phillies are rebuilding, and the Atlanta Braves is kind of. You know, 50-50 right now. They're like kind of they're, they're rebuilding still, but got a good set team. But like I said, they did okay last year, but I don't think they. But the Braves always beat the Mets no matter how bad they are, so it doesn't matter. Um, the Yankees. Uh, I don't want to get my hopes up. I don't want to jinx them, but they're looking very good. The lineup I saw today is probably the lineup that's going to start opening day, but who knows? Aaron Boone can make it any which way. I'd, as much as I'd like to see, yeah, the, the back-to-back guys with. Judge Stanton and Sanchez. I really want to like to see him back to back to back. You know, you gotta throw a lefty in there. Throw throw D D or Bird. Probably I would say Greg Bird in there. But like I said, uh, I'd rather save Sanchez later down the lineup. Put Judge and start Stanton back to back, or or Stanton and Sanchez back to back. But you got you can't have them all in a row. I think because you gotta throw a lefty in there because it's too easy to pitch in the lineup. Then you know. Um, but you know Stanton hitting fifty nine home runs last year and. Judge hitting 52. Granted, will they hit another 50 home runs? Probably not. But I think they'll hit in their 40s, maybe. If not, you know, I mean, they crack 50 again, great. But I don't, like I said, I'm not, I don't think that's going to happen again. Um, but, like, you know, who ne- you never know. Um, but I'll tell you right now, I don't care what anybody says, as, ma- as much as all the hunt home runs Judge and Stanton are going to hit, I'll tell you right now, the guy who's going to put a, have a great season this year, as long as he stays healthy, because last year he missed a good chunk of the season and still hit 33 homes, Gary Sanchez. Gary Sanchez, by far, I think, he hits home runs, but he's but he hits the ball hard no matter what where he hits it. If it's over the fence, down the line, even ground balls like the shortstop and like you know infielder guys, he hits the ball hard. I think he can have an MVP season. He'll hit maybe forty home runs, close to that, between thirty and forty, if not more. Driving over hundred RBIs or more. His batting average, I think he's gonna hit for a better average. I think he's gonna hit close to three hundred. I don't think he's gonna hit 
you know, maybe a little bit over. She's like 304, 305. I don't think he's going to hit like 330 or nothing. But he might hit two high 290s, low 300s. Watch out for Gary Sanchez. I think if you put him in the middle of that lineup, if he's got either John Carl Stanton behind him or in front of him and Greg Bird behind him or Didi behind him, he's going to get some fastballs and he's going to fucking do some damage. <clears throat> I think starting rotation still worries me just because CeCe's getting older. I'm not sold on Sonny Gray, really. Montgomery... He had a good season last year, but it's his sophomore year, so we'll see what happens. Um, Tanaka, like I said, he did a decent regular season. He was better in the playoffs. Um, and Severino, who had a great year, was up and down a little bit, and he wasn't that great in the playoffs, but he did okay. I think we should have got, got another starter. Who? I don't know. But, you know, maybe put on the trade deadline if someone's hurt or someone's not pitching well. Either they bring up one of the young kids who's doing well, or they go trade for somebody, which I could see them doing. But... Our bullpen's so awesome, so I'm not worried about the bullpen. If you get the Yankees through the six, get them through six innings, the starters, the bullpen's going to shut it down. So, excuse me, but um, like I said, I just watched some of the game today, and um, yeah, the Astros killed them last year. I know the, the Astros. Hey, the Astros, they still got to they're, they're the defending champions. You know, I don't, I'm not taking anything for the Astros. They'll probably be, you know, right there at the end with them again. Probably battling the ALCS, at least I hope so. Hopefully they beat them this time. But like I said, the, the Astros still got the same, both pretty much the same team coming back, so they're going to be the ones to contend with. The Red Sox, they, they've done some stuff, but I don't think, you know, they'll battle out for the Yankees in the East. Otherwise, I don't see the Orioles doing nothing. They'll be mediocre at best. The Blue Jays will be mediocre at best, and the Rays are going to suck again. So um, that's about it for that. For the uh, wrestling, I'll talk real quick. Um, SmackDown, uh, the paper, Fastlane paper view was good. Um, Raw was okay, and SmackDown was pretty decent. Uh, but I'm playing right now. The WrestleMania card is looking pretty deep. It's looking probably the best one I've had in a while. A couple matches I don't want to see. A couple matches I think are going to be good. And some, I think the one match that's going to steal the show is probably Nakamura versus AJ Styles. If anyone has a chance, go on YouTube or any other media outlet that you can download videos on, especially old wrestling videos. Um, New Japan Wrestling. The match between AJ Styles and Nakamura, which I don't know how long ago it was. I think it was, I want to say it was 2000 and, oh shit, 2008, 2007. I don't know what year it was. I forgot. But just type in Nakamura, AJ, and and uh, New, New Japan, and the match, the match was amazing. Will the match be as good at WrestleMania? No, but because they were younger then, of course. So, But I think they're still going to put on probably the best match of the night. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. I don't give a shit about. I hate them both. I just hope Brock doesn't win because I'm sick of him being a champion and never being on TV. At least Roman Reigns is on TV every week as much as I don't like him, but whatever. Um, triple threat match, there's two of them, which I think is going to be two of them. The Intercon Championship match with The Miz, Finn Balor, and and uh, Seth Rollins. That match is probably going to be probably one of the best matches of the night. I hope I see Finn Balor win. If Seth Rollins wins, I'll be okay with it, but I'd rather see Finn Balor win. He deserves a championship run again. He didn't get a fair share. He should he should be actually frustrating for the Universal Championship in my book, but he isn't. Triple Threat U.S. Championship match should be good. Grant Yorton def- defending against Bobby Roode and Jinder Mahal. I think Bobby Roode's going to win it back. I think the only light freaking what's his face win it at fat, uh, what, uh, Randy Orton won it at Fastlane, so he just has now he's the Grand Slam title. He's won every title on on both shows, so congrats to Randy Orton. You know, it doesn't matter. He's already going to Hall of Fame anyway. It doesn't even matter if he had that or not. Um, <clears throat> tag team, Braun Strowman won the tag team battle royal on Raw, which was stupid because he has no partner. Three things are going to happen. Three people are going to have to be his partner. Elias, who he's been fighting with for, for a while, the last couple of weeks. Kane, and this is out of left field because he said he's going to resign him, but I don't know if he'd be his partner because he's so small, and that's Neville. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. It could be Bray Wyatt. Get the, you know, maybe form the Wyatt family back together. I don't know. But they can't let him win the tag belts by himself because that would be completely stupid. Tag team tag team championship is going to be probably a triple threat match. Um, I'm going to say with, you know, it's going to be with, you know, Usos defending against New Day and the Bludgeon Brothers. Hopefully that's a lot of match. Someone's got, one of these matches is going to be a lot of match. Which one, I don't know. Oh, and everyone got pissed off that everyone that they named the woman's um, battle royal after Fabulous Moolah, which I you know, I said she was a great wrestler and did, paid her dues, but she was kind of a really shitty person. From if you read a lot of stuff on the internet and 
old, old stuff, the documents. She was like, when she was training some girl, some women wrestlers, she was pimping them out too. So she wasn't the nicest lady. So I can see why people are upset. So they just named it the Women's WrestleMania Battle Royal. They dropped the fabulous Moolah's name from it. Um, which I don't really give a shit about. Oscar challenged Charlotte um, at Fastlane. So I think that's going to be probably one of the best women matches of the night. And probably going to be Osk, uh, Nia Jax going against uh, Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. Which I, I think Nia Jax deserves to win a championship because she's the most dominant female. She's the biggest female. Got to at least they have the, the belt for a little while. You know, at least a month or a couple months or so. At least till the next pay-per-view. <clears throat> and uh, I'm trying to think of anyone else. Oh, John Cena challenged the Undertaker. As everyone saw last year, Undertaker folded up his hat and his gloves and his coat after he lost to Roman Reigns. I think they're going to break the Undertaker back as the American Badass Undertaker, which I loved. Is he going to be the same? Of course not, because he's 53 fucking years old, and I don't think he's going to be, of course, you know, he looks, they showed a lot of pictures of him on Instagram. He looks in great shape, but... He's still 53 years old. He's not, you know, I don't care how great shape you are. If you can't hit, do the things you can do in the ring, like last year, he's tolerable against Roman Reigns. Terrible. So, uh, unless he's taking steroids again or something, I don't know how he's going to be. But, because Kid Rock's going to the Hall of Fame. Kid Rock's saying, saying a badass thing, so I can see Kid Rock seeing him out as he comes down the aisle on his motorcycle or whatever. So, as much as I don't want to say, see the Undertaker wrestle, that's, that's probably what's going to happen. I'm going to take some emails. John, I'll do yours first since I got here. So thank you for doing more shows with expanded topics. Even though I love the WWE, asking other questions to a distinguished group of gentlemen, and I'd like to say new friends is always fun. Here are my questions for me, my sister, and cousin Carl, who is a new fan. Hello, Carl. In your opinion, who was who was the most undeserved American Idol? Hmm. I don't really watch American Idol that much. My wife did. She watched pretty much all of them. <clears throat> watched you know when we were going. You know, we've been married for. 13 years now. I watched some of them. We didn't watch like the last couple of years, a few years. Um, the first, the ones I remember were the people who deserved them were Kelly Clarkson, the first one. And I don't know what season Carrie Underwood was on, but she was hot and she sang her ass off. Um, Ruben Stuttered. He won like season two or season three. What the hell has he been? Um, and the other guy, I don't the guy who looked like Jay Leno, and I forgot his name, but where the hell has he been? Uh, like I said, I don't watch American Idol that much. My wife, that's my question for my wife. I see you wear a lot of superhero shirts. Who's your favorite and why? Oof. I have two favorite superheroes. Like, I grew up more DC, but I love you know, I love Marvel as well. Um, Batman from DC and Superman um, from Marvel. Mostly Batman, just because he had a lot of badass gadgets. He was fucking kick-ass the karate, and, and he doesn't have superpowers yet. He's awesome. Spider-Man was cool because I liked him. He, with the webs and shit, and he got bit by a spider, which I used to love spiders, but, you know, when I was younger, it was, like, my favorite insect growing up. Um, so, those two, Justice League I just got the other day, it was awesome. The, I don't know why they didn't put the scenes in, the, 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 the Zack Snyder cut scenes in. They weren't that long. I don't know why they just didn't put them in. I don't know why freaking Josh Whedon cut them. They were cool. They weren't, you know, did, did it make any much of a difference in the story? No. But it was still cool, because it was about Superman, so. But anyways. O.J. Simpson is clearly guilty of murder. Do you and Mr. X agree? I don't know what Mr. X says, but I think that motherfucker, he came out the other day on the show and admitted it, pretty much. But he got away with it. So, like I said, the past is the past. Nothing to do about it now. Uh, I'm not going to answer that one because I have too many people who bust my balls about uh, that. So I'm going to go to the next one. Who's the best unsigned talent in wrestling? Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is awesome. He's good on the mic. He should be in WWE. If he doesn't come in by the end of this year... Or yeah, I could see him coming next year and, and probably doing what AJ Styles did and, and you know making his appearance, uh, his first debut at, at uh, Royal Rumble. Best looking newscaster. I like Meredith Morakovitz on Yes. Yes Network. She covers the Yankees. She is beautiful. Uh, I have my GD. What is the highest level of education you guys have? I think this is my inability to speak without stuttering due to the nerve is holding back my potential. Um, I have to say, I have an associate's degree and leisure and recreation management, which hasn't got me any kind of job. So, uh, Mr. X, I, he's got a great job, so I'm pretty sure he's got a higher degree than I do, but I'll ask him next time. Um, a guy like me that is shy and has a very hard time meeting girls, in all seriousness, why should prostitution be considered legal in the U.S.? I don't know, man. It should be, but it's not, never going to happen. 
Um, I think the Warlord is one of the most underrated big guy wrestlers of all time. What do you guys think? Um, I think so. I think he, he was a great big guy, but he was a tag team mostly, so I don't see him as considered like separate big guy. But he was, he was I, I liked him. He was the powers of pain um, with the Barbarian. Um, they were a good tag team, managed by the Doctor Style Slick. Um, you know, and like I said, he, I think he won a Battle Royal once or twice, but I don't think he, they never, you know, he, he wasn't the, the biggest guy in the roster at the time when he was around. I think the Astros will repeat 2018. Altuve for president. Altuve is a good player. He's a really good player. He kind of reminds me of a Spanish Derek Cheater. He's got all the, all the right way he goes about his business, the way he plays. He plays hard. He, you know, he, he's probably one of the best all-around players right now. Are you guys married? If so, what's the best and worst parts of being married? Yes, I'm married for 13 years, as I mentioned before. Ups and downs, man. You know, you go through tough times and stuff. You know, you have, and you have kids and, you know, there's bills. And, you know, like, so right now I'm going through stuff. By the way. I finally finally got some stuff, good stuff going on for me right now. But, you know, you go through stuff, you know. Um, you just one day at a time. And just hopefully you and your partner can work things out without arguing. And, like I said, a lot of people get divorced, you know. And, it, and sometimes it... Uh, you know, you just try to work through the hard stuff. You know, as, as, as much as you don't, you get mad at the other person, they're always going to be there for you. You know, it's it's just a matter of trusting your partner. And, you know, the good parts are the good parts, you know. The bad parts are the bad parts. But like I said, everything has its ups and downs. But you sit, it's just you got to stick through thick and thing. That's what it says in your vows. And if you don't, then you get divorced. Worst WrestleMania ever. Oof. Not... It was recently. WrestleMania, I want to say 30, what are we, 34? 32. 32 or 31 was one, I, one of those two. I, I was terrible. <coughs> I couldn't even sit through the one. It was like the matches were horribly planned out. It was, it was bad. <laughs> what is the moment in your life that you look at and say, that's the most pivotal moment in my life when my daughter was born? I said, now I have to be a responsible adult. I have to be smart. Make the right decisions, not be a jackass, and you know that that was big when my daughter was born. Describe your perfect man cave. I had a perfect man cave when I had my house for you to move out. Um, I had a Yankee man cave, dude. It was beautiful. I had a, a freaking beautiful pool table, the big TV, the, the huge huge shape the U uh, U shaped couch that surrounded the TV. I had my all my Yankee paraphernalia up, all my signed pictures and posters and. Oh, it was I, I miss it, dude. I, it's, we had to move because we're having my we're having my daughter. We couldn't afford a mortgage. We couldn't find any, uh, any other cheaper place to live. <clears throat> we moved into an apartment, so eventually we can get another house. Well, I don't know. At least maybe down the road. I don't know if we're gonna do that, but yeah. Thank you guys very much. Keep telling others about your program. Thanks, man. Oh, and he says, oh, what are your three top bands of all time? I love the Beatles. Oof, bands are tough, man. Um, like I said, I, I grew up most in hip hop and rap. Um, I loved House of Pain, the Beasties. I've had to pick a band, um, Oasis, um, one of my favorite bands, they have a cool, so, cool few songs I like, um, I don't know, there's a few others, uh, I have to think off the top of my head, but I can't remember them now. I have an email from Buddy Delph, again, and I have another one that I have to find here. Uh, okay. What is, he said, what's something where being fat is an advantage? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I'm not fat, but, um, I'm not, I'm not super skinny either, but I'm not, you know, uh, I'm average weight, I'd say, for my, well, the doctor said, I'm a, for my height and my age, I'm a little over, but not, like, I'm not obese. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's any advantage to being fat. Uh, unless you're like, you know, you're the, you know, uh, going the first person to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, be on the only can eat uh, buffet line and, uh, you know, people behind you are starving. They're freaking making fun of you and just eat everything in front of them. Piss them off. Favorite video game of all time? Oof, that's a great question. I have many. Um, Mario Brothers, uh, Tech Mobile, RBI Baseball. Uh, Zelda, uh, Batman Arkham Knight, um, man, WWE 2K18, 
18. This year's is pretty good. Last couple of years has been kind of, uh, this is the one I, last couple of years I've been the good, I didn't even buy them, I actually just rented them. Um, uh, that's, that's the one I can think of. Most, what's the most disgusting thing you'll ever admit to doing? Ugh, I don't know. Probably, uh, picking my nose. <laughs> my brother has been dating a girl for two months. I hooked up with her last year, just kissing, and neither of us have ever told him. The guilt is killing me. He's a depressed person, and this is the happiest I've seen him. What do I do? Whew. That's a tough one, dude. Um, I would just tell him. Like, I would tell the girl. I'll say, listen, you know, if he's happy, I just if it's just kissing, you know, there's nothing to kissing. It's not terrible. Like I said, if you've actually had sex or fooled around any other way, that might be a little bit hard to swallow. So if it, if you did that, I wouldn't tell him. But I think he could take kissing unless I don't know how sensitive he is to stuff like that. But like I said, that's that's a complete, uh, you know. That's up to you. But like I said, if it's just kissing, I think you should be okay with it. Like I said, I, I wouldn't be upset. Like, if, he's, if if you slept with her, that's different. Is Elias and Damien Sandow the same person? I don't think so. They don't look that much alike. He, Sandow was a little bit taller, and he had more, he had black hair, unless he died. I don't think it's, I don't think it's him. I think it's, not this, I think it's two different people. And let's see. I got another email from... Hold on. Let me pull it up. From... Arjun Segal, Dear G Funk Jerry, much praise and warm feelings for the acknowledgement of your program. Your advice and guidance is a blessing, and we speak your name here in our community. Please, if you will, s s s we have a several several questions for you. What continents have you been to? <coughs> Canada and uh, Bahamas. <laughs> I haven't been to any continents really. I haven't really left the continental the United States. Um, what is the average annual income in America? I don't really know. That's a tough one. I'd say probably between probably fifty thousand. I'd say depends. You know, fifty thousand is probably the average. I'd say between fifty and seventy-five thousand. Um, what uh, a U.S. visa is hard to get. Any tips? I don't know. Maybe you should have a very have a very clean. I'm sorry, Canada is a continent. You're right, John. <laughs> well, if it's a Canada, it's another country, even though it's connected to the United States. Eh, it's North America. I don't know. Oh, I've been to Canada. Uh, any tips on getting a visa? Couldn't tell you, man. Just be honest. And if you have paperwork, make sure it's, you get all the I's dotted and the, and the T's crossed. Um, plans for the end of the week? Not really. Nothing much going on this weekend. Uh, picking my dad at the airport. He's coming home from Florida. His birthday's this coming week. And um, that's about it. Uh, I wish you love and health. Excited you have come back. Please say hello to my wife, Luma Pai. Has great excitement. Hello, Luma Pai. I think that's what it says. Arjun. Thanks, Arjun. Well, folks, that's all the emails I have. And uh, like I said, Mr. X is going to be back hopefully this weekend. Um, like I said, he had a last minute business trip he had to attend, so fortunately he's not here. But folks, I will be back maybe this weekend or sometime next week. Um, keep the comments and questions coming at jerrygman2376 at yahoo.com. Or if wrestling questions, send them to wrestletalk2018 at yahoo.com. Folks, I'll talk to you soon. i got to go. I'll see you when I see you.